Mike, turn your games down. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 184 of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Hubbard, and who is threatening to kill old men with me tonight? My name is Joe Butler, and you'll never believe which one of these power-ups have a touchy name. My name is Blair Farrell. I'm from comicbookvideogames.com. I know exactly which one you're referring to, and I can't wait to break one of the fundamental laws of robotics today. <laughs> this is the Blue Bomber, Carrie Chandler, Carusetta on Twitch, K-R-O-S-E-T-A. All right, and welcome back, all of you. And you guys are here to join me to talk about a game that Ashley was recommended by some guy in the Podbean comments. Oh, God, I... Earlier this year, John C. Comedy's like, man, I hope you guys do Mega Man 7 one day. And I, we hadn't even done six at the time yet. So I purposely put six on the show. I mean, this was, you know, months and months ago. <laughs> so we could finally talk about Mega Man 7 for Super Nintendo. It came out in 1995, developed and published by Capcom. So I've never played this game before this week. I had always, I, had, I hadn't even, I only played a few of the original Mega Man games, and then on the show, I, I played through the first six, but I've always been kind of, like, skeptical of seven because, well, there was X on Super Nintendo, so I just played X. I, I had no interest in seven. I, I tried it, okay, I did try it a couple times, but I didn't like it, and I, don't, yeah, I never I, got anywhere. I think of myself as a Mega Man fan, and I've played a lot of them, but uh, I never played seven before this, so. What about you, Joe? I'm more of an X fan. I, so, uh, yeah, and uh, I... I think the only one I've ever played besides this one and maybe a handful of the others was 8 on the PlayStation, but that's pretty much it. Okay, I have never touched 8 yet. It's on my list. It's going to happen now after this is done, but I don't know when. But It's really good. I love 8. Okay. Eight, 8 was the one that was, it was the first PlayStation one? Yes. 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 Yeah. I, 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 I have that one. I don't think I've played it, though, actually. I've played 1 through 6, and then, of course, X. I've played X 1 through 3, and then I played the Game Boy the Game Boy one, but that's it. <laughs> I, what, about you, what about you, Blair? Yeah, let's not brush over the fact that I have a feeling that John C. is secretly John Cena, and he wanted me <laughs> to talk about Mega Man 7. <laughs> um, I wish Which means because... we're getting a Mega Man game on Switch. <sighs> <laughs> this game was a bit of a white whale for me because, like, when, where I grew up, I mean, I probably said this other times in the show, like, like, I didn't have a Blockbuster or a chain video store. We just had to rely on, like, gas stations and mom-pop stores. So they got Mega Man X 1 and 3, but they never got X 2 or 7. And I remember seeing ads for 7 in the magazine. I was like, oh, man, there's a new numbered Mega Man game, and I really wanted to play it. And then there's a video store that's a half hour away from me. And, like... Uh, in the late 90s, my parents were like, OK, we'll let you rent from the nice video store a half hour away. Like, God love them for like doing that for me. And they had Mega Man 7 there. And I was so happy to play it. And I really like this game except for the ending because <laughs> I think it's unfair. But um, I thought it was, it was such an interesting thing because, like, I remember I was probably one of the many people when like when Mega Man X came out I thought it was a Mega Man 10 and yeah. I was trying to like, OK, like there's six in the 10 now, but isn't there like four for Game Boy? So why is this 10? <laughs> so when they went back to like after I played X, I'm like, oh, because he's Mega Man X. OK, yeah, not that I, this makes sense, though, Yeah, to have that logic. It does. It was the same way with um, gosh, what was the other game that was like? Uh, anyway, uh, oh, I know what it was when when we were kids. I was like seventh grade when Final Fantasy seven came out. And we're in America, you know, if, if you weren't like, oh, plugged yeah. into the gaming, it was like, wait, but Final Fantasy 3 is like my favorite video game ever. Where's 4, 5, and 6? We're just all of a sudden jumping to 7? What's it's going like, on? Well, there's <laughs> those and Mystic Quest and the Game Boy ones. Yeah, there you go. Even exactly. Final Fantasy games. <laughs> yeah, my first Final Fantasy was Mix Mystic Quest. I like Mystic Quest still. Uh, it's, it's, it's fun for what it is. But yeah, no, I was a... Uh, so I, I, as a kid... It was like Mega Man 3 was my first Mega Man. Came out when I was in the third grade. And that was like, that was my game. I played that like all the time, just like over and over. I never, I never beat it as a kid, but I just played it forever. And then I got on, I got five and then I got two or I didn't get to, I borrowed two. And then I borrowed someone's Game Boy and played the Mega Man on that. And then those are kind of, that was my Mega Man until X came out when I was in, I don't know, probably junior high school, maybe junior high. And I played the hell out of that. 
and then I came back to all the I came back to, you know, finish out like play off play all these other ones later as an adult. But yeah, I just Mega Man Seven just I always just kind of didn't even know it existed really until I was gosh in college and you start seeing it in emulator list and stuff. It's, it's also one me. that I feel is way overlooked because it comes out I think what a few months after X came out. So it, in it, America, it, yeah. So it's a weird situation where it's like people don't really like you have X, which is a new thing. Why all of a sudden are we getting, you know, this now? So I think that that played a big part in it. Not only that, I think it was after X2. Like, I think X2 and Mega Man Soccer, of all things, were already out. It says X3, I think, was 96 in North America. Damn. So this Uh, is really late entry then. And this was around the time that the Mega Man cartoon, I think, came out. Because I remember seeing an ad in a magazine. It was like play Mega Man 7 and then had a tiny little ad in the corner for the action figures based on the cartoon. And it was like, watch the cartoon on blank. Yeah, it that is crazy. I, I, I was like, no, that can't be true. And I looked it up and X2 came out January 95 and 7 came out September 95. God, that oh, that's crazy. I thought it came out like right after X, but it came out after X2. That's crazy. So, I mean, I can understand, because I know this game is worth a lot of money, if I remember correctly, on the on eBay and stuff. Like, if you have a complete in box or cartridge. Yeah. I don't think it's a cheap game. Oh, it is? Mm, Mega I Man have 7. a copy. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I don't really look up retro stuff because I don't care. But Yeah, I don't. I, I stopped really, like, collecting for the most part. I, collect, I have, like, a lot of consoles because I modify and repair consoles as a hobby. But as far as, like, games go, I um, I got the Anniversary Collection on PS2. That has one Mega seven. Man, yeah, it has one through seven on one disc, and then the other disc is X one through X six, I think. And, no, that's uh, a different collection. Yeah, no, it's, this... it's a it's a two. There's two of them. There's two. Pl- they're for PlayStation two. Oh, we yeah, had the yeah. anniversary collection and the X collection. Yeah. Okay. The, oh, yeah. the well, anniversary well, yeah, okay. collection was one through eight, and it had the two arcade games that are going to oh, be right, released right. later this month on Capcom Arcade Stadium. Oh, yeah, so I've I, been wanting I got, to play those. So I got that a few years ago. And I was like, okay, well, then I'll sell all my old Mega Man games. And so I sold, uh, I didn't sell X, but I sold um, my other, like my NES ones. And I had, I had a uh, three and five complete in box and they were worth, a, I think, I, I think I sold five, uh, three for like $380. Yeah. Three worth all. And then five, five, I think I got like 185 or 200. Oh, wow. Cause I have, I have five in the box and that's the thing. Cause like I play this on legacy collection two on my switch i also have it on ps4 oh, yeah. oh man um, that would be the way to play it yeah it just it really it's it just sucks because like capcom did that internally as opposed to letting digital and clips do it which oh. would have been the right decision because what's weird about legacy collection two is that when you boot up the games like you don't get the opening for Mega Man Seven. Like it just jumps you straight to the start screen, and that's the same thing with it. Mega Man Eight is on that, and it doesn't have the opening cinematic, which is actually really cool. Oh, uh, it's, weird. it's kind of superfluous for this game because it's just like Mega Man arrested Doctor Wily, and then he basically had a Batman plan for if I get captured, I'm going <laughs> to have four robots break me out and then come get me. <laughs> oh, that is that is weird that they would cut that. I think if you let it go, it replays. But yeah, because I remember I bought Legacy Collection 2 because like it's uh, yeah, I'm I'm of that mind now where it's like I have all these games on cart, but it's like I'm never going to use these anymore because like it's just I don't like the uh, the X collection because it's not they made it too good. (laughs) Like my 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 muscle memory of Mega Man X2 is based on jank and they took out the jank. Oh, it doesn't like have the lag when you jump. Yeah. Over, so like, when you're fighting yeah. surges, which I think is like the X hunter and he kind of like spins mm-hmm. around and fires the energy balls. That's super fast. Oh, and gosh. I'm just like, oh, no, no, this is supposed to go to a snail's pace. This is how yeah, I, need, I need the lag. Yeah. yeah. But like the uh, the X, the Mega Man collections pretty much, especially one through six are like one, one to one. Oh, yeah. They even kept in in like Mega Man two the the yellow devil bug. <laughs> Where you can like pause it right yep. as you right as the beam hits, and it will just like stack the damage and kill it in one hit. They even kept that in the uh, I believe in the Legacy Collection. Yeah, all of it's there. It's just like, like awesome. even the flicker in Mega Man Three. Yeah, oh well, yeah, man, man. I know that. Like I said, that was my game. I know that flicker. You guys want to hear the saddest goddamn story ever? Yes. 
So I had a, I had a hand-me-down console because I was the youngest a cousin of my grandparents' group. And I got a Super Nintendo. And one day while I was older and at work, my grandma sold my Super Nintendo with all the original games at a garage oh, sale no. for like 20 bucks, which also included like a Mega Man that I found at a pawn shop for like 10 bucks in like that, 2010. Oh, that was, that was no. too sad. That was too sad. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, in the bright, you made somebody really happy. I've also yeah, probably made someone a lot of someone. money too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oof. Well, no, I'd be pissed too. I, I yeah, all my old, I I have all my old games are. Well, I'm actually hopefully gonna pick them up while I'm in Milwaukee. <laughs> if I can find them, <laughs> my parents are they games They're coming with now? me this time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I unfortunately yeah. don't have the first game my mom ever did find, so I I I I got rid of it a long time ago. I didn't like it. But yeah, I just went through like a decluttering. That. I had plenty of money. It's not like I needed the money or anything. I was just like a decluttering. I was like, well, I've got Chrono Trigger on DS. So I'm going to sell my complete in box Super Nintendo copy. Oh, and I did that before the <laughs> pandemic when that oh. only when that went for like God, 350, 400. And now it's worth way more than that because every, you know, mm-hmm. everyone started collecting games during the pandemic. But that's OK. It's whatever. Somebody's got a complete in box Chrono Trigger and good for them. <laughs> or almost complete in box. I did not include the posters because I wanted to keep the posters. <laughs> I've got those those two posters. Uh, I regret that I never kept any of my Super Nintendo boxes. I ripped them all up after I got the game because it yeah. didn't matter to me. I did the same thing with stuff. Funko Pops when I first well, it was, got it. I was at my old house and I didn't have like any place to really display stuff in, in our old house. And now in our new house, I have my own office and I'm just like filling it with statues, like 3D printed stuff and models and all that kind of stuff. But as far as my like game cartridges and stuff, I just throw them in a drawer I'm just, yeah, it's fine. It's whatever. I have, I put all my like PlayStation and PS2 games just in like a binder. I'm, I'm not like, I don't know. I just kind of was like, eh, you know what? That's not, I don't want to display like just those things. I want art. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I, but, I mean, now that I have an office and I'm going to be starting a uh, remote job, I'm trying to decorate my whole area. So when I'm on camera, it looks cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's got to get the, get up, get doing the YouTube. Uh, eventually oh yes i yeah that'll be this the thing. finally pushed me over i think to finally start since i have to i've been meaning to decorate for like two years since i bought the house but i've been just lazy you can, <laughs> you can, you can uh live twitch stream your podcast recordings i'm sure there's people that would watch that there, there are but then you'd i be cra- you'd be surprised how many viewers i get whenever i'm 3d printing something and i just like set my camera pointed at my 3d printer for three hours they come back and I've got more viewers than when I play Dark Souls. <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> Look at like, all right. I guess whatever, man. <laughs> I guess that's what y'all want. <laughs> right, so anyway, so Mega Man Seven. Oh, Mega Man Seven also does something way different than I, than any other Mega Man game up to this point. Because when you start the game, you don't get eight bosses. You only get four bosses to start with. Which I didn't because mm-hmm. I didn't watch the story cutscene because it's Mega Man. I don't care. But like the whole story that like we were talking about earlier where Wiley had a contingency plan where when he got captured, he had four robot masters that would then wake up and then find him and break him out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> it's not only that, no. too. They also do the intro stage, which kind of makes replaying this oh. game annoying because it's like you have to suffer through all like the dialogue. And it's like, just let me walk and shoot things. I don't need like. Mega Man making a joke about like getting the wrong helmet from like Otto. <laughs> yeah, that was it was it was weird. It reminded me of the cartoon a lot. And you were mentioning that the cartoon was around this time. It me- it definitely gave me vibes of the cartoon. I remember the cartoon definitely. being bad. Okay. Oh, this is hundred like, percent like, less sexist. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it when I was a kid, but I haven't revisited. And I was like looking. By the way, I was saying this, like came out in high school. Uh, this came out when I was in the sixth grade. It's or. The fifth grade, maybe 12. Yeah, no, me, oh, me sixth too. Grade. Yeah, sixth yeah. grade. But yeah, I used to watch the cartoon when I was definitely too old for the cartoon. <laughs> I just remember we didn't have cable at my house and I would spend the summers at my grandma's house. And she like during the day while my a lot, not every time. And I remember USA played Sailor Moon and then Mega Man. And so I would like I got I watched <laughs> like a block right there. Yeah, so I watched like it was like two episodes of Sailor Moon, two episodes of Mega Man, and I would watch that every morning. And this like one or two summers of my life where I just like watched as much Sailor Moon and Mega Man as USA had. I love Sailor Moon so yeah. much. 
I liked it a lot when I was a kid. I started to rewatch it with my son as an adult, and I was like, is, there like, a good, is there like a super version of this? Is that Crystal? Yes. Yeah, they, okay. it's, it's, crystal. it's on Netflix. Yeah. It's right. a condensed version without all the filler. So it's it's like Dragon Ball Super. Okay. But it's really, really good. Like, I watched the first season. I only stopped because I want to record about it, and my recording thing didn't fell through. But it's really, really good. Like, yeah, that I sounds like the thing to do. Yeah, I was even say, like so I, one of the seasons that's very chibi moon heavy is like not even a season it's like two two hour movies yeah Whew. it's um, it's from when i when i saw the first season it was really good i i highly recommend it all right i'll have to check that out because um, i know the old stuff doesn't hold up i'm sure so so as far as Mega Man 7 goes how did everyone play this i emulated it on pc uh, I Damn. played Legacy Collection 2 on Switch, but I also have in PS4, and uh, I have the cart, but like, just for ease of play, I just played it on Legacy Collection. I even, like, I met my parents out for the weekend, so I just brought it home with me and just kind of did another run-through just to get a refresher before recording today. Oh, uh, yeah. What about you, Joe? I, I played on PC. I bought it for the Legacy Collection because it was, like, $8, and then y'all told me the final boss was hard as hell, and I was like... <laughs> You know, my my reflexes aren't as good as they used to be. So I'll go ahead and just play this on the, on the emulator. Does, does uh, Legacy Collection have Rewind? No, no not two. Not two. The first one does. Oh, you can, you man, can I'm check glad points. I didn't do that then. You can checkpoint save and you can checkpoint save like before like Dr. Wily. But like, yeah, that's it's better than nothing, but it's still almost <laughs> nothing. Yeah, I will so say that's like my number nine. <laughs> that's more like it that uh yeah i i don't know if i could have I mean, no i'm not gonna say i don't know i know that i could not have gotten through that final boss fight without flash saving or rewind this no whole way. damn game is hard like i uh, oh i see i was gonna say this is the easiest Mega Man game yeah, i've I, ever I, played I, this is i've not never crazy. played a Mega Man game this easy did you follow a guy like did you do the uh, like boss order i did guy boss here? order yes but I yeah. still had a very hard time. Like, were you, buying, were you buying items? Yes, I was. I just had a oh. hard time with like levels, and then the boss fights in general. Like, bur- well, we'll start with Burst Man, for example. Like, Burst Man, I think that's the guy that has the bubbles. I had the hardest time, even with save stays, trying to beat him because I kept getting caught in his bubble. Oh, I just walk into the oh. bubbles and then shoot them, and then you just kind of fall. Like, that's kind of what you have to do. It's like a war of attrition that it takes longer. So that didn't work. But I mean, if you use the scorch wheel, he shouldn't even be able to get you in the first place. Like he, he just well, sits mean, there and burns to death. You have you to don't have that yet first. Yeah. Huh? Well, I beat him. Oh, I guess it you... depends on what order you. Oh, oh, well, I did uh, from the ice guy again. first. Yeah. And then I fought yeah. first man with the ice oh, yeah, weapon. But the, interesting. The, yeah. Freeze. But the freeze problem with that, yeah. he would still get bubbles off on me. And I still kept getting caught in the damn bubbles constantly, even like. And I didn't switch weapons. Like, I didn't want to switch to the blaster. I mean, I know you can L1, L or R, but I just didn't switch. I would try to break it with the ice bubble, and that is not a good move. So my strategy was just dodge all the damn bubbles and not get caught. And so, that was... Uh, you were I talking just, about buying yeah, items. Did you know that... So did everyone... Like, because I, I know where all the... You don't really have to buy anything in this game except oh, for no, sub tanks. Yeah, okay. that was, that's what I meant. I only bought sub tanks. Yeah, same. Because it's I like used can... a guide, but but then I ended up not using a single sub tank until Wiley, so it didn't really matter. I <laughs> well, I, I, I don't want to be like I'm good because I don't think I'm very good at Mega Man games in general. But yeah, this one was like crazy easy. I didn't have to use flash saves or anything until the end. It was like that was what I was going to complain is this game's like way too easy until you get to the end, and then it's insanely hard. Yeah, you know, I which use, is it's kind of how I feel about Mega Man Two, also, right? Like Mega Man Two is super easy until you get to Wily's Castle, and then I've never actually beaten Wily's Castle in Mega Man Two. Or no, am I thinking no. of two, or am I thinking of four? I might be thinking of four. Yeah, I can't think of. I think which is the one where the green dragon like chases you. That's two. That's two. That's two. Yeah, I've never actually gotten past that green dragon in oh. two, which I've never tried to do like flash say. I, I mean, I've tried to do it like legit, but still. I can give you so, a few pointers on that. But yeah, but that's my thought is like two is like really easy up until then, which it may just be because that one weapon that Ninja Star you get in two is just ridiculous. Oh, the Metal Blade, which yeah, is metal, its own weakness. Yeah, Metal Blade, <laughs> just, it's everyone's weakness. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's <laughs> everyone's weapon weapon weakness. Yeah, but no, I thought I just, this was this was like, yeah, I mean, it was I, I was just like, man, is this is this easy or am I just like? suddenly good at Mega Man and I think it's I, it's easy. 
I was having terrible time throughout this entire game. Every level was hard for me. Every boss fight was hard, except for oh. Junk Man. Like, this game was tough for me. But then again, I also don't like platformers a whole lot. Like, that's not oh, my okay. style of game. I'm a, I am ai like shoot the person shooters the best. And I'm like, another thing I like, X X was my, is my main Mega Man type game. Like, I don't like the fact that you can't jump on walls in this game because it's classic oh, Mega Man. Yeah. Like, you, yeah. like, literally to make some of the jumps, you have, I would watch his feet and see when his feet were just about to leave the platform and then jump. I had to watch his back foot because that was the only way to make so many jumps for that like you had to be that close you couldn't Mega make Man you does feel he feels heavier in this game and it is yes. as i remember i played this in like 90 i'm gonna say 97 or 98 and like i mean you're in this, you're still in the 16-bit hardware so it is weird to play in like a Mega Man game that for lack of a better term feels this slow compared to x as you're constantly just like yeah. dashing yeah. and moving up walls and crazy speed and this is this, very like meticulous. It's still really following the the NES Mega Man formula and style. It just plays better, looks better, but it's still following like mechanically. It's an NES Mega Man game. I think it looks better. I don't think it plays oh, yeah. better than. Oh, I think it does. It, it's like so smooth. There's like no lag on it. Like there's never like lag the way there were in the NES ones. Okay, I'm judging it more on based of play a bit, like how much I enjoy it. <laughs> so yeah, but, and I, I will say wrong. my my fate like I mean uh, you know not other than like Dark Souls and Zelda, my favorite style of game are Metroidvanias. I love you know platforming and exploration, and so yeah, for me like Mega Man is you know my what's my introduction. Like, well, I don't know. I mean, I guess Mario's introduction to platforming, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I never thought I'm, I don't think I'm good at Mega Man games, but this one, yeah, I didn't think any of the levels were difficult. The one that I got kind of tripped up on and died a little too much on was uh, Turbo Man, uh, oh, where you're jumping across. <laughs> yeah, with the oh, yeah, do we want to go in order? I guess we could talk a about little bit. This is the first four I wanted, but okay. okay. Joe, so, did you have any pr- problem with the difficulty? Yeah, no. So, like, one of the things that doesn't help you know, showing that we're getting older is Mega Man because my God, I feel like my reflexes are slowly getting shot. And like, there's times where like I'm jumping over a cavern and I'm just like, oh man, am I going to make this? Cause I'm probably going to die, but I made it. And, uh, other than me almost hitting spikes and having to save a couple times, I think I maybe only had, I had no issue with the bosses except for maybe two. I want to say it was probably slash man. And I can't think of what the other one is. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's hard to like when you hit slash man it's hard to avoid those red the eggs that fall on you oh yeah, yeah i was never able to do that i just like kind of accepted that i was going to get hit by those yeah me too oh and uh it was shadow man that's what it was oh shade man shade man yeah i like They're getting the timing on that is really hard mm-hmm yeah no i mean i felt everything in this game everything in the game was hard to me except for like because Cloud Man, okay, there are a couple bosses that weren't that bad to me. Cloud Man wasn't too bad. Like, he was the first boss I fought with a Buster. I also got to say the Buster sucks in this game, which I think <laughs> is... What, what was wrong with the Buster? Well, I mean, yeah, it's not that strong. I mean, it, uh, well, I mean, okay. I was also... Speedrunner said it's the weakest Buster in, in Mega Man in general. Like, it does way less damage than normally Buster does. So you Uh-oh. didn't use the Danger Wrap on Cloud Man? No, I oh. beat him with Buster. Because if you use the danger wrap, like he can't, you don't even have to move. You can just stand in one space and wrap him in bubbles and not take any oh, damage. Yeah. That's what I did for the refight. Yeah, oh. I did yeah, for the refight. Yeah, but I, I did Cloud Man first. I just beat him with the Buster, but I thought he was easy because his attacks. He just floats there for you to. Ju- he just hangs in the air for you to just shoot like a pinata, and his attacks <laughs> are like telegraphed. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's because I've been playing so much Dark Souls. <laughs> I was just like. I used I to do think, Cloud Man first, but then I switched yeah, to Burst Man because first. it makes getting because this game has a lot of secrets and unlike Mega Man X, like you have to either buy or find the escape unit, which is annoying. And yeah, then, like was, one yeah. of the helpful items in this game, because in the first four levels, you can get plates and it's like R U S H and you get a super adapter like a Mega Man six. And that yeah. makes some of the platforming easier, like the Something I always find tricky is in Slash Man's level, you have like this waterfall with these barrels going down. Oh, yeah. And that's mm-hmm. really tricky. Like you have to be very pixel precise. But if you have this super adapter, you can just kind of like you have a temporary, like, I guess, double jump flight thing. And um, yeah, but I right now I'm just like I'm too lazy to like 
go back and get the part <laughs> and then like commit suicide because I normally have like five, six, seven lives. It seems like they hand their one ups in this game fairly frequently too. Yeah, and and well, and that is the thing. Like that is actually what I bought as I bought a lot of like one ups and e tanks, and I bought the uh, escape thing early, actually. But I thought the ability to go and buy items, at, you know, before any stage really helped. But then also, I will say I was using a guide. And so using a guide is probably a big part of why it felt so easy. It, when I was if I had played this when I was 12, I would have had no idea of the boss order. I, w- I would have had to find out from like the playground and probably gotten incorrect information. <laughs> yeah. Well, you that's know? the thing about the secrets in this game, because in, in Mega Man X, like they introduce like the armor and the hard pieces, and it's all very intuitive how to go about finding them. Yeah, like, the only thing that's not know, intuitive like, your is eye, the... your eye knows where to go or where to look. And in this game, there are secrets and they are cool. Like it's kind of in the the back half levels, but like without Nintendo power, like you would almost never know where to look for them. Oh yeah. I mean, when would you, I mean, you would just have to randomly use rush, rush search in every screen, which is so dumb. Yeah, yeah. I, I hate I thought that was really dumb. But thankful, like I said, I had a guide. So I just like I, I, I went basically I went through and beat the first four bosses. And then I used the guide and said, all right, I'm going to go back to each of these stages and get all the secret things. And, you know, with the escape unit, that's no big deal. But also, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, I, I maxed out on lives like really early. Also, so that wasn't a big deal if I did die during the platforming or whatever. And yeah, the rush adapter was super useful or whatever it was called. Especially when you find the homing punch in Turbo Man's level. That's if you know, again, like (laughs) where it's hidden is like, where, why would you ever think to search here? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that is an issue with to me. Like the fact that the game makes you do rush search with no type of inclination that you should do it, you can just. It's just an ability that you get that you just have rush start digging like a dog. And it's really like it's and it's also kind of precise, too, because I mm-hmm. like I was looking for the exit thing and it told and the guy told me it's like you know a couple blocks away from the exit of Iceman's level. I know it's not his name, but and I was looking for it and looking for it. I could not find it because I wasn't lined up just right. And that that really made me say this is the, the dumbest thing Wait, in the world. The escape unit is there in Freeze Man's world. Yeah. Yeah. In Freeze Man's. Because I always get in. Sh- Wait, where do I get it? Either the maybe shop. I, it's in Freeze Man. Oh, maybe I do buy it. Maybe that's the only thing I. Ah, oh, I didn't know that. I learned something today. That's yeah, cool. It's about a block o- about a block away from where Freeze Man's door is, but it's kind of like yeah. you gotta be in the right spot. The uh, also issue is I like any uh, any Mega Man game I play, I play them wrong, and I will always say that I play them wrong because I play them all with. Using, I try to use the Buster only except for boss fights. That's just the way that I play Mega Man, any oh. Mega Man game, which is not right. But well, it's not oh, man. Like, Most seriously? of them are fine yes. like that, but yeah. when you get to Mega Man 11, like, you have to use the weapons. Well, yeah. Really hard. I, 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 I use the weapons, like, pretty liberally if I know that that's not what the boss is going to be using, especially because they, they give you uh, weapon refills like crazy in this game. And then once you get the equalizer, that the energy balancer and Shade Man stage, then that really makes it because then they just fill whatever's lowest. And but yeah, I was like, like Junk Man's power, that Junk Shield was amazing. I would just put uh-huh. that thing on and just run through levels and I did use that for the boss. Yeah, ju- just, the the junk like the you. junk shield was so junk shield was like OP. Honestly, it it junk shield was super powerful. You had to use thunderbolt to do a bunch of stuff. I thought there's like a bunch of places where you had to like activate things with the thunderbolt. Yes, I would use it for stuff like that. But like in general, I don't use weapons but for regular. Like slash slash claw just like ripped through things. Um, I just can't. For, I, I don't crack, know. Freeze cracker was like you know because it does bank shots, and so you can hit people in the back with it and stuff. Like those shield guys, you could just jump over them and shoot them in the back oh. with freeze cracker. Okay, um, I didn't same do thing, that. Same thing with the um, the sound one, whatever the sound. Oh, the noise crush. Yeah, noise crush. Yeah. You know, you could fire it, you know, behind someone, and it would bounce back and hit them, and just things like that. Like it was. Yeah. Uh, I use the wep- I use the weapons a lot, but especially um, junk shield. Which remind me of Leaf Shield from is that Mega Man Two? Yep. Yes. Yeah. It, it's hundred percent that. Yeah. And it the was, Skull it was, Barrier and the Plant Barrier. And... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, 
a little bit of recycling there, but still, it's okay. Uh, we've definitely had the uh, freeze cracker before too. Yeah, Danger Wrap was a new thing. I've never seen. I don't think I've seen anything like Danger Wrap. Danger Wrap. That was the one in the bubble, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, ne- I I never used that until um, when you fight Cloud Man again. Dad, fucking. Oh, I use it I for am. the um, the the turtle boss in Wiley's level because if oh, you wrap yeah. one of the turtles in a bubble, then it kills the one that comes after it. That's smart. Yeah, I read about that. I didn't do that. You can yeah. also wrap one of the turtles and then bounce the turtle backwards and then bounce it into him to do a bunch of damage too. Oh, it's really, man? A I, this is a great show. I'm learning like lots of this <laughs> stuff. About yeah, I, I, I never use the. Uh, I never use the. Fly the power fist or whatever until the until uh, there was a fight where the guide said this person is weak to the power fist. Oh yeah, I think it was was it I think it was maybe base in trouble, mm, yeah, or, may, or maybe just base, and it was like just like annihilated him. So oh, Joe, it was when it was when base and trouble combined. Yeah, Joe, when you play Mega Man, do you play like me or do you actually use the weapons? I can't remember. A combination of both. I I usually do the whole thing where I. Uh, I try to run through the level. I, I know if, if it's like a like Carrie does it. If I know the boss doesn't need it, I'll end up just using that power level power up until I get to the boss. So like I use the slash a lot and the shield. I also technically feel bad because I fucking cheated and I cheated hard because <laughs> I ended up driving myself into a hole to where I got all the way up to the only person I had left was Turbo Man in the whole the whole boss set and. I went to open up my emulator and I saved over my oh yeah my save state and I went oh well shit so I just went over to my walkthrough and typed in the code to get everything and all four e tanks <laughs> yeah and yeah that's yeah, so. not bad yeah I mean you're not missing much like all the stuff in the, the the unlockables in this game are not that hard like. Besides the rust search crap we've been talking about, like you can buy everything. I mean, except when you gotta find a bolt that's not that well hidden, but you can find most things in this game. I mean, like it's not that bad. Really, man. Yeah. Like knowing to hit that, to get the fist to hit that wall in Spring Man's level, it's like you would. Okay, never... that would be bad. Yes. Yeah. That would be. Never mind. That's where the bolt was. Yeah. No, man. That would be. I would never figure that out. Okay. Also, the uh, an, the answer to my question was freeze cracker. Say. Yeah. Very. I knew. Yeah, (laughs) one comma that has a completely different context. (laughs) Yeah, this is this is yeah definitely without a guide, this would have been way harder. That's true because I yeah there's I'm I'm just looking through work because I I hundred percented it. I got every item and I'm looking through and I'm like, oh, there's no way I would have found that. I I I wouldn't have found the bolt now. Specifically, the hyper bolt freeze man thing, like because that was that's like the only thing that I buy because I knew. I knew how to get all the rush plates and I knew how to get the proto man shield and the uh, homing fist and the bolt, but I never knew about the escape unit. Huh? <laughs> Is that yeah, hard? I, I, I bought the escape unit. Like that was like the first thing I bought. I saved up bolts and bought it like right away yeah. because I knew it would be useful. I bought it. I always buy it after I get the bolt because like, it's really expensive if you don't. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Did anyone actually go back and get the proto shield? I did. Mm-hmm. I forgot I to. And then I beat I, the game. I mean, I Fuck I got I, I I got I got it just as I didn't like go back. I just got it as I was playing. But I didn't use. Oh no no, I used it a lot once I got it. Yeah, it was. I just kind of always had it on after I got it. The problem was that every time you use a power, then you now you have to go select it again. That was a little. But so like every time I would use like you know rush coil or something, then I'd have to go back and reselect proto shield. I found that a little annoying. I wish it had just replaced your buster. Yeah, it'd be cool if it was just always on. Yeah, well, because, I mean, basically it does replace your buster. It doesn't use energy. It does the exact same thing as it, as having your buster. It's just now you also have the shield. And so you also sh- can't sh- shoot and move, I don't think, right? The shield just doesn't stay up when you move. Oh, okay. Then that's not that bad, then. No, you can totally shoot and move. It's just the shield goes on your back anytime you're moving, and then when you stand still, the shield goes in front of you. Yeah. No. Oh. Okay, I mean, I didn't bother to get it. Just be, I just I didn't care enough to finish the stuff with Proto Man. I just moved on. <laughs> I mean, I was was there, what was there to finish? You just had to fight him, right? Yeah, you I know, but I didn't want to fight, fight him. You just had to fight him three times. One of my worst fights in a Mega Man game, like I think it was five, was fighting Proto Man. Five or six, I hated fighting Proto Man, and that that memory was still in my head when I went to do this. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. Fuck Proto Man. <laughs> yeah, he wa- he wasn't really hard. The well, he didn't look was, bad. He's just you. From what I read, it was just like, just use, don't use weapons, just use your buster. 
Yeah, that's what I do. Because if you if you hit him with a charge shot, he kind of stumbles backwards, and you uh-huh. kind of stun lock him. And like it's the pattern is pretty easy. It just it just feels like it takes too long, and you just have a power bar, so you don't know how much yeah. damage you're actually doing. Well, and the thing is, is you get him locked in an AI loop if you hit him with charge shots. I so just didn't basically, care. if you hit him with a charge shot, then he'll always, always do the exact same thing every time he gets hit with a charge shot. And so you could just do that. It only takes like five or six shots and he stops. And says, I always okay, get it you just because, but uh, yeah, Mike, it's totally justified not getting it because like I'm a completionist when I play this. I just, I get it just because, but I never turn it on. I just like having my menus filled out. <laughs> That yeah, was my I'm, a, goal I'm, too. A, I'm a completionist with every game I play. It's a, it's a sickness. So I, that was my goal too, was to get it just to get it. But then I was just like, I'm got to go on my trip. I just want to beat this game, and I'm like, <laughs> fuck it. So that played a part in it too. I just it was really bad timing because I was going. I left for my trip, and then I'm like, I got to get on the road. So that didn't help me. <laughs> that played a part in it. Otherwise, I think I might have went for it just because because this game wasn't long or anything. It only took me a couple hours to beat this game. And with save state, that is. Oh, I definitely, I spent some time on it. I mean, not, it was probably seven hours or six hours. Oh, I played really quick. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. I have no idea because I just, I mean, it doesn't tell you. I don't play <laughs> no, this game like as Steve. much as the other ones, because like, I, I think of it, so I, I always think about it, like, I really like to play Mega Man 7, and I think about the last boss, and then I just kind of can talk myself out of it, but mm-hmm. I still have somewhat of a muscle memory for it, so like, it only took me like, one or two sittings and that's because like late at night i'd be like okay i'm tired and i'm kind of dying just because i just it's need terrible. to turn this off yeah i do want to talk about my favorite level slash man i really that's the, like that's the one that's level. like a jungle it's like a tight it's like jurassic park oh yeah yeah yeah, mm, yeah. yeah it's a great freaking level you fight dinosaurs yeah yeah, I mean, you get yeah. chased by a T-Rex. You got to fight Stegosaurus. It's like, it's a really fun level. <laughs> then you, really then you like, commit, like, a war crime and, like, set the forest on fire at the end. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. The way I looked at it is Flash Man probably should have been in a freaking X game because he looks like an X-Boss. He, he does. Really he looks does. like an X. Yeah. He yeah. really looks. He would have been, like, Panther Man. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and, something like, not not what he was. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, I don't but it, he would have been like saber tooth tiger man or something. Well, slash so, yeah, beast did come two there. years later. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> but it was it, it was a. I mean, I didn't mind the fight. I I just loved that level. Most levels were were not bad. I also like we, we've been talking about junk man or not junk man up uh, turbo man off and on. Turbo man level is kind of cool. Turbo man I had a really hard time with because for some reason I could not get the time. Even, I'm using save states and I just would keep jumping too soon than I should have been because like he I mean he does give you a warning he makes a certain noise before he drives but I just didn't want to he he took too long and I'd want to jump early and get yeah. hit and then it's very hit. precise it took it me took a while, a while to, while to get the time in yeah I didn't like it yeah he, he's his stage is I like the aesthetic of it but I found the platforming with the tires really kind of annoying that was where I died a lot I had to use a super adapter because I kind of like there's a false same pit. So I would fall in the false pit and then boost up and then just kind of use it there. And then, like, they kind of have the quick man lasers later on, but they're fire. But they're not they're not as bad as what quick man is. But uh, they're not still bad. Killer, yeah. They? yeah, they are. They're just not yeah. as fast oh. as the quick man ones. It's it's a, it's easier than the one in quick man stage, but it's still instant kill if it hits you. And it still has tantalizing power ups to pick up on the way down and all that. I probably I, pro- I probably used uh, save states on that section, actually, just because I was like this. I, I, I was just like flashbacks to quick man. <laughs> or is it is it flash man and you use the quick? Um, no, it's quick man. It's, it's quick man. Oh, it's quick flash man weapen. I use a flash man weapon. OK, I had it backwards. Yeah, I think the hardest part about the turbo man stage is when you get to the store to buy the toy for Jamie. And he's not there. I don't. I just didn't like Turbo Man. I'm trying to think. I, I did like Shade Man a lot. Shade Man's the level that's really a throwback <laughs> to Super Ghouls and or Go, Ghouls and Ghosts or Ghosts and yeah, Ghosts, whatever you want to yeah, call it. Series. Yeah. I never. Even there's a that. there's a trick where if you hold down a certain button when you start that stage, it will play a different music, play a different song. It will play the Ghosts and Ghouls song in Mega Man Seven sound format. Yeah, also, which I only know because Speedrunners told me. Also, I, I, right. I read about that. Yeah. Apparently, you can also like bubble the the night heads when you're running through that area. That's yes. weird. I hated those things because they don't <laughs> register until right when you're in their face. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. I just kept getting hit by those. They worked fun. <laughs> they made me mad. 
but it was still it's a, it was a really cool level. I mean, you fought zombies. I also like Shade Man's design a lot. I like like he's like a, he's like Dracula. Like he was just really cool to me to fight too. Oh man, if he grabs you too, if he gets that, yeah, he's bad. oh, because he he drains your health and refills his, which is terrible. And I mean, I save state, so it didn't it, I didn't have that problem, but it was still a fun. I like, but it. I but I like the idea of like the what was the was it Wild Coil was his weakness? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. I was thinking of something else. But yeah, <laughs> you if you got really lucky, you could do a really weird thing where you could uh whenever he jumps, he he dives at you. You could jump and then use a wild coil, and then that's kind of a faster way to get through him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like it's, basically every time he starts to jump, you hit him with a wild co- coil, and he falls down. There's so. something interesting about the weapons in this game is that like when you get a weapon, like Doctor Light will say. Oh, yeah, the, like Mega Man will say, like, oh, it fires balls of ice. And yes, it can also be used for this. But they also don't tell you about certain things. Like, I think, like, the Freeze Cracker, for example. God, I hate that name. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can aim it diagonal up and down. I didn't know that. Same. Until I watched Game Grumps do it in, like, 2011 or 2012. And, like, with the Wild Coil, like, if you hold up, like, it bounces higher. No. Which makes the last mm-hmm. boss a little bit easier but they never like dr light never says oh if you do this like they they give you important information like proto man even tells you at one point like try using the fire in the forest stage and yeah. dr light says oh try using the thunderbolt to power things which are used to get the rush jet and junk man stage but he never yeah. they never explain about like these important things that would make like certain things a little bit easier. Yeah, I found out about being able to aim the freeze cracker because I was having a really hard time with Dr. Wiley at the end. And so I watched a video of how to beat him. And in the video guide, they were saying, you know, to switch to the freeze cracker anytime he appears high because it you can aim it. And I was like, wait, you can aim it? Yeah. I would have had a much harder. I read it online. The guy told me you can aim freeze. Otherwise, I would not have known I could do that. Yeah, like I no said, idea. this is a Nintendo Power game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even uh, I mean, y- yes, John. Uh, one of the weird things too isn't this the first introduction to base as well? Yes. It yes. is. Yeah, the, this is the first I, time I, was inter- I was introduced to them in the arcade in the um, that fighting game, but but that came game. after that came after this though. So. Yeah, this is yeah, this uh, is his first appearance, and then base is also in trouble, and then base is in Mega Man and Base, which came out way after eight. Yeah, that I had that. Super Nintendo. That game yeah. is it's that game has an interesting story because I know uh, I guess you've had on the show Greg Seward stream Mega Man and Base, um, and part of the trivia is like that game came after Mega Man Eight, and like Inafune or Keiji Inafune, the person who's kind of listed as a creative Mega Man, even though he kind of isn't. Um, <laughs> Right. He Character said designer. that like he wanted to make a Mega Man game for I guess the younger kids who would have been handed down Famicoms after people bought Playstations. So it's like I wanted to make a game that was easier for little kids, but it's like secretly the hardest like mainline Mega Man game. Like Mega Man base is so hard. That's what I heard. Yeah, he's in thirteen games, by the way. Thirteen base? Mega Man games. Yeah. Is he's this in Battle Network? Uh, he is in Mega Man 7, 8, 9, 10, Mega Man and Base, Mega Man the Power Battle, Mega Man 2 the Power Fighters, Mega Man Battle and Chase, Meg, uh, Rockman and Forte, Mirai Kara no Chosensha, Rockman Online, Rockman Strategy, Rockman Gold Empire, and Mega Man X Dive. Is he oh, small? yeah, because there's, there's a Wonder Swan version. It's either Wonder Swan, I think it's Wonder Swan or Neo Geo Pocket Color of Mega Man and Base. Uh, it's uh, Pocket Color, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's also a really cool secret boss in uh, Battle Network. I okay. have his action figure. I have never played Battle Network yet. I, I want to well, someday get into that. Series. Well, the the, uh, the, the yeah, collections out next year. The collection coming out next year for the Switch. So there you so go. So excited. Or probably for everything, actually. But yeah, I mean, I'll yeah, buy I, it. I was introduced to uh, Base in Trouble like, in uh, Mega Man: The Power Battle, the arcade fighting game. So it's, God, I want to play those. I will always. I I need to do that in the show one day. The, it is. What the arcade fighting Mega Man Power yeah, Battle? Just a mini. Yeah, it's. I, I don't, I'm not. I don't think. I don't think it's good, but you'll be able to play him later this month. <laughs> that it's weird uh, that you mention a uh, Mega Man and Mega Man and Base for the Super Nintendo yep. because I specifically remember buying that at a Sam's Club for my Game Boy Advance, and it makes sense that yes, it's hard the, because yeah. 
at Hardware the American localized version. version was only on Game Boy Advance, and it, and uh, the only way to play it on a TV legally is it was on the Wii U Virtual Console. I bought it before mm-hmm. the, uh, they removed the ability to buy stuff with credit cards. Yeah, it was Super Famicom, then Game Boy Advance, then Wii U Virtual Console, yeah. And the problem with that is that, like, because of the screen dimensions of Game Boy Advance, it cuts off some of the real estate and it makes bosses artificially harder. <laughs> oh, but the the gamepad is the same is the same as the GBA. Yeah, but it's like the screen. There's a boss like later on in the game with. And oh, you said? Oh, I see. Yeah, because like the screen has to scroll upwards. Like everything isn't on one screen because it oh, yeah. has different dimensions in a TV. Because it's from the Super Famicom. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna oh, say thing I, that I buy a lot of GBA games on Wii U Virtual Console because it's the same resolution. But mm. I see what you're saying. Yeah. For if it was Super Famicom first, it would be a problem. A thing that we need to mention too that was a big complaint that I with this game, which I can I understand, is that Mega Man sprite is way bigger than normal, like you would have had for the X series. And mm. you get less real estate of screen to move around or see, and I do completely b- agree with that. I don't like how big he is in this game. Yeah, that's yeah, that's it's it's a similar thing with like they did with uh, Mario Land Two and Metroid Two, like where they are like we want to really show off this sprite, and so we're going to make it really big, and then that makes platforming harder because a big part of, platf- of, of platforming is being able to see where you're going and see where yeah. you've been and all that. So and yeah. a, big, a lot of it's memorization. Yeah, especially my big complaints is I don't think it's it it doesn't really bother me that much. Like I, I get why some people wouldn't like it. It just never really bothered me until there's a stage in the Wily Palace where you're floating upwards and you have to avoid mm. spikes. And the only way to avoid them is to know where they are. And I don't like that. That would be annoying. I also didn't use Rush Jet very much in this game either. Like, I know you get him. I had him, but I just never found many uses for him when I was playing. Oh, I, I, I used it a lot. I used it to Me pass too. a lot of the harder platforming areas. They even set up enemies specifically to make it to where you can't do that. Enemies that'll jump out and knock you off of it. In the junk man stage where you yeah. have to cross all those platforms with the, with the stuff falling on them, I just rushed Jet through that entire thing. Yeah, and that was why getting the super adapter as early as you can is really helpful, too. I got it. I didn't get it till the end of like because way way yeah, I, played I didn't get game. it. I didn't get it till the very end until I was like, I fight all this castle eight bosses. And then I go and collect everything I'm missing. That's why I play X games. So that's with this game, since you're able to redo levels, that's what I went and did. I beat yeah. all the bosses and I went back. Oh, that's well, fascinating because I, I had a friend. I, <laughs> I had a friend who I would play. like play the X games and he would go and get all the secrets and then die and then start the game proper. <laughs> With oh all yeah, stuff. And just be. Uh, yeah. I I like to have all the weapons that I can then use. I mean, I will grab stuff uh, in X games. I know where it is. I'll grab it while I can. But I sometimes unless I'm having a really hard time, then I'll start going back and get. Oh, I like to get stuff before I go to the castle. Just how I play these games. Yeah, that, and that was that was what I like. I did the first four bosses and then went back and got stuff. Then I did the next four bosses and went back and got stuff. And so I didn't get. I think you don't. Well, but I still I missed. I know I know what it is. I missed the the U in Cloudman stage. So I got to Wiley's castle and I had R S H and I'm like, damn it. And I had to go. And I was like, and I just somehow I missed the, the U in the walkthrough. I mean, I mean, it's easy to miss if you don't have a walkthrough, but yeah, that's one that we didn't talk about yet is to get the rush adapter. You have to collect four different rush letters to spell out his name, obviously. And then you unlock the rush adapter, which they're not too hard to find. I don't think. Yeah. Well, the, the U in Cloudman stage, you have to specifically Oh, yeah, never mind. You have to shoot the second okay, weather maker right. with the freeze cracker so that he turns the rain into snow. And then that makes the ledges show up so you can see them. So it's like, yeah. how on earth would you have thought of that? How on earth? Like, I just can't imagine <laughs> I'm going to shoot this random robot that's making it rain with an ice power, which, by the way, I didn't have because I did Cloud Man stage first, like most people Same. do. See, I found that as a uh, kid by accident because I was just like, if you kind of move along the platforms, you can. I never even knew about the snow, man. Oh, you just like get it. You just like get it. Write down all these notes. You just like walking on invisible (laughs) platforms. Yeah, I just like, I think I was just walking and I discovered it and I was like, oh, there's something up here. And then when I got the rush jet, I made a mental note to go back later. And that's kind of how I've always done it. That's smart. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah. No, if you shoot the second weather, it creates snow, and then all the platforms, you can just see them. Oh, that's really okay. cool. Yeah, that's how I did it, but I just used the guide. Oh, and the only other bosses we haven't mentioned yet is there Springman we haven't talked about. I don't think there's a whole lot to say about Springman. His level is kind of 
looks like a carnival zone. Reminds me. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I do like the kind of sometimes there's a, a logic to the boss's weaknesses, and sometimes there's no logic to it. <laughs> no logic. Yeah. Right. So like it makes sense that Junkman might be weak to Thunderbolt because it's like, well, he's more machine like. So yeah. and plus there's like stuff Junk in Man. his there's stuff in his level that you yeah, have to cool with, with cold. And I can see how the bubble guy would be weak to ice because it would freeze the bubbles. Okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And and then Springman being weak to slash makes complete sense because it like break. You can see it like looks like it's like ripping his springs apart when you hit him with it. It's kind of brutal looking. <laughs> Springman's level is almost better by in hindsight because there's a level that kind of uses that same motif in Mega Man Eleven. That's an absolute nightmare with lots of springs and bounces. But like oh, yeah. the boss is by like, Bounce Man in Mega Man Eleven is oh god. Um, but he's pretty simple because like he like I think about most of the bosses in this game, which why the last boss is such a nightmare is that if you use the weaknesses, they all fall into predictable patterns. Most mm-hmm. for the most part, like Slash Man is hard to avoid because like he when you hit him, he freezes and he jumps like in a hidden space where you can't see him and drops eggs on you and you can avoid them. But if you get hit by them, you you're kind of covered in red and he'll just like, like a bull, I guess will home into you and there's no way to get it off unless yeah. there is. I don't know of any way. Cause I'm no. finding out lots of stuff today that I didn't know. So maybe there is, but you kind of almost have to take the hit. Unless you can just not get hit by it, which it felt like just, luck of the draw whether i got hit yeah. by it or not yeah and then after you beat four boss the first four bosses you have a I, I like the stage you don't do much you just go to like the museum of robots where you see all a bunch of robots from previous games and capsules and stuff i did like that and then the whole idea of wiley's trying to steal guts man for some reason not yeah i like that too but i was like why would you keep those things <laughs> it's like dismantle yeah. them it's not like there's yeah. a there's a that's Mega Man all, comic. That's where, our where, heritage. I, I guess. <laughs> there's, a, there's like a Mega Man. There's a Mega Man okay. comic series where like Mega Man is fighting Needle Man and he's like, oh, I can reprogram you and make you a good guy. And he's like, yeah, but I'm a bad guy. That's what I am. So it's not like you're putting <laughs> these things back to use. It's just like, no, they're going to get stolen possibly and used for evil again. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I like it that he steals Gutsman because Gutsman tends to be a boss that like they like to use in the series a lot. Because yeah. Gutsman's in one, he's in two. Is it? Yeah, the guts, the guts dozer. I think he's, he's in, in the uh, Saturn version of Mega Man Eight. No, it's Woodman and Cutman are in the Saturn version of Mega Man Eight. Yeah, Gutsman was also big in the cartoon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gutsman and Cutsman were the henchman characters. He was, yeah. Gut, Gutsman and Cutman were the the henchmen. Yeah. Exactly. And you fight a stupid con boss, which can be really easy, but annoyed the hell out of me. I hated that con boss, by the way. Hated him. Well, he's yeah, you would shoot the head off and kind of he's, he has a pretty big zone to avoid. Yeah, I just didn't like him. I mean, I also like I use, I got to a point in this game where I just started using energy tanks constantly because once I knew I could buy them for cheap and I had and I actually found a way. There's a really easy way to farm bolts to get like 800 to get max bolts in like tw- 10 minutes. So that's what I did. And then I just mm. bought Every boss fight, every Wily stage, I just used up all four energy tanks if I if I needed to. I didn't care, and I just bought and I just bought new ones. I didn't need to. I used like one or two, but I would just go buy them and fill up every time. Yeah, I saved them. I I, I just used them on uh, Wily. But uh, well, I, was I, think I, used, to... I think I had to use one on a different on a on on a one of the later boss fights also. Well, some of the the Wily stages are tough mm-hmm. in general. I felt. I mean, I would yeah. use save states. I didn't take much damage, but the boss fights were annoying. Like you have, so, you know, turtle. what? I used, I used them before before a couple of bosses. Like I'd get to a boss and be at like half health, and I'd use one just to start off the boss fight fully health. Nope. Okay, oh, so yeah, I would. I, so I, I did I that. Normally, I yeah, did that I would have times. normally have so many lives. If I went to a boss with like no power, I just like would die and go back with full health. <laughs> yeah, that. that um, awesome. I did that more than once. I really like how like the four because when you start off, it's like. You have the four like bosses, and then you beat the kind of stage with the clown, and then it has eight because um, it reminds me of like a lot of the Game Boy games where it's like you only have the four bosses. Right. I like the Game Boy games. Yeah, I didn't realize there. Was, I didn't realize there was more than one Game Boy game. I think. Oh, there's I just, five. I, <laughs> and they're I different had, games. 
The only one I played was Mega Man 2 for Game Boy. I they're actually a completely I think even Mega Man 5 for Game Boy or Mega Man V as it's called actually has different bosses. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, no, they're it was all different, planets it was and your your buster fires your hands. <laughs> the hell. We are gonna do those someday on the show. I've just it, haven't gotten to them, but they're on my list. I think in this my probably one of my favorite boss fights was Gutsman. See, I find him really hard. Well, again, I was using the guide, and so if you use the slash claw. Every time he goes to throw a block at you, you just knock it back in his face. Oh. Yeah, because I was yeah. using the slash claw, but I was always trying to. I think I was. I, I would have because you can jump on the block and then jump over it, which is what I was doing. But the hard thing is like when he rushes you and throws you into the roof, like that does so much damage. Yeah, I think I might have used a, a, a an energy tank on him, but no. Whenever he he like basically like you you stay back from him. You shoot him, and when you're shooting in range, that makes him go, okay, I'm going to throw a block at you. So then he grabs a block out of the ceiling or wherever he gets it, and then you slash that block as soon as it lands, and it bounces back in his face and does a bunch of damage and stuns him. Oh, that's cool. So it's, Yeah, again, it was like using a guide is probably why I found this game as easy as I did, because I think without a guide, I don't. it would never have occurred to me that for some reason the slash claw is what you need to do there. Like, why would that? Why? Why would the slash call be? And that's, and that's I guess it's the only punch. Because <laughs> this is like this conversation now is like the 2022 equivalent of the playground talk, oh, which is. is why yeah. I'm yeah. so because like I've been playing this game since like I never played it when it was out. Like I played it in 97, 98, and I've kind of been routinely playing it since then. But like I never really looked up any videos or anything except for tips on how to beat the last boss. And like I'm learning all these things now, and I'm just going to incorporate them. It almost makes me want to grab and play it right now again. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know if I recommend that, but okay. Yeah, because we're getting to the worst part of it all. Yeah, the Wily stuff is like is tough. And I, yeah, I mean, levels. I, I'm, I'm never a big fan of the Wily castles. No, they're never fun. They always just it always is such a ramp up in difficulty in every one of the games. Yeah, and this was no different. This had some very hard moments, and I didn't really like them. The bosses like weren't. I didn't like the bosses too much. Like, I mean, first you played were, that the bosses were, trouble. Yeah, the bosses were fine. It was the levels themselves. I, f- I felt like. Yeah, the base okay. and trouble mini uses they you fight base and trouble once. I just use the super adapter because like the fist yeah. kind of homes in on him. But the second one is pretty tricky. Like, it's probably that harder than any boss outside of Wily in the Wily stages. Is that where he's fly, fl- flying around. Yeah, yeah, when he kind of okay. uses his own version of the super adapter, because I guess something that we never really touched on is base is secretly trying to be your friends. Yeah. And is convinced and, that, like, we're also a man and robot canine or, like, robotic yeah, superhero tre- tre- team. Treble, treble is his rush and all that. And oh, Sigma. Has, Sigma had a dog, so you killed that, him. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> true. But, yeah, so you fight base by himself first, and that's an easy one. But then, yeah, when base and treble combine... And then it just becomes like a Gundam battle with like two two Gundams it's, flying around each other shooting. Yeah, it's fun, though. It's yeah, fun. it was fun. And yeah, th- I mean, the thing is, is if you're using the rush adapter, that power fist does a lot of damage to him and it homes in on him. Yeah, so that's what I did. I use that, too. Same. And it's kind of yeah. funny. It's like in Mega Man 8, they recycle a lot of these concepts is like there is another <laughs> Mega like base trouble combined fight, and even like the Wily fight is the second form is much like this one, only way better. Yeah. <laughs> have, have you guys ever played um, Darkwing Duck? Yes, I have. Yeah. I've never finished it. Yeah, That's an well, episode the, of the show. The final ba- the final battle, the final boss fight of Darkwing Duck is very similar to this final Wily fight. I feel like, and is also insanely Ooh. hard. I can't imagine. I, I get I use like I think it has the the Disney Afternoon collection. I, I it think has it has rewind. Say, it has, it has rewind. rewind. Yeah, I had to just like rewind. I mean, it took me even with rewind, it took me like an hour to beat the final boss of Darkwing Duck, and it's that's the only bit, trophy I don't have is beating the bosses in that game and the game in general. Yeah, I, I like that game a lot. It's a, it's very much a Mega Man game. Um, <laughs> it's it is, and of course I love Darkwing Duck as a character, but. But yeah, I, it is like I just was realizing just now thinking about it that it's a very similar boss fight with the the boss that's appearing in different places, often too high for you to hit with shots that deal like a fourth of your life if they hit you. <laughs> like it's a very similar fight. 
And episode and, 81, if you want to hear my opinion of Darkwing Duck. Yeah, no, I, yeah. <laughs> it's a good game, but it's like a lot of games from this era. I don't know how I played these when I was a kid in the 80s and the 90s. Because like, without, yeah, I guess just time and just a, ma- a matter of not having that many games to play. Well, it's, and, it's yeah, you have, because like recently... Like I listened to a gamer looks at forty, and he and he did an episode on James Bond Junior for Super Nintendo of all things, <laughs> and what? that was a game that I own because for some I never had watched the cartoon, but I remember I going to yeah. our department store and I was like I want those toys and I had the toys and the game came out and honest to God I have a journal entry where I was like. I went to the gas station and I wandered around Super Nintendo and James Bond Jr. and my mom wouldn't let me. And my mom read it and she was like, how dare you show this to your teacher? But uh, <laughs> huh. I own that game. And because I own that game, like I know it back to front. But that's because I own two Super Nintendo games, Mario World and James Bond Jr. And I had played Mario <laughs> World to death. And I was like, I got this money game with my birthday money. I am going to beat it. So that's like why we kind of like did that back then. Like yeah. the, even things like Genesis games and like Genesis games were made artificially difficult by producers to deter the rental market. I mean, NES did the same thing. It was, yeah. they both did and that. Super yeah. NES. It, it's, it's, it's interesting. Cause like with uh, RPGs, like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest and stuff, they made the American versions easier because they felt like Americans didn't have the patience to get through RPG, uh, actual JRPGs. So, like, you know, Final Fantasy II US is extremely easier than Final Fantasy IV in Japan. But when it came to games like this, like platform stuff that you would actually rent, they usually made the American version harder because of the rental market. Whereas in Japan, it's illegal to rent games. So, Not or it anymore. was. Not yeah. anymore, but it was back then. So, but yeah, I, I just, I'm like... There's no way I could ever have beaten this game without, you know, flash saves and rewind. Like, it just never would have happened. And I think about it, I mean, I love Mega Man. I've never beaten a Mega Man game legitimately, though. Like, I've never, I played Mega Man 3. I probably have 100 plus hours in Mega Man 3 as a kid. And I've never gotten past the first part of Wily's Castle on that. Oh, really? Yeah, because so I was saying, like, I don't feel like I'm good at them but it's just like this one i felt like that's what i'm saying i felt like this one was like really easy until wireless cast because i didn't have to use flash saves or rewind or anything like that until wireless castle and then i was having to use flash saves to get through not the bosses but the, the stage itself so and then yeah the wily second form that's what i've always appreciated about the Mega Man series and maybe it's why i gravitated towards it more as a kid is because like there is such a thing as nintendo hard like, yeah. like your Contras, mm-hmm. your Ninja Gaidens, your Castlevanias, but I always thought uh, Contra, of yeah. all of those, Mega Man was the fairest because they gave you like unlimited continues, except for the first game, you had passwords. Like mm-hmm. something I don't like about in this is that like in Mega Man in the Nintendo games, except for Mega Man 2, because I, I was I know there was one in Mega Man 2, you can only have four energy tanks. And then in Mega Man 3 through 6, you can just, I think they went up to 9 or 10. And in Mega Man 5, they introduced the Mega Container. And this, they knock it back down to 4. And I think if you were allowed to have, like, just one more, the last boss would be doable. Just because you would have to just, like, take the hits. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Because they limit them, it's like an art of, like, it just makes it. Like I have said to people over the years, like the only way to be Dr. Wiley in this game is if there's a planetary alignment. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I also want to mention, we haven't mentioned beat is in this game too, but he doesn't, he's not like beaten. I think five where he murders Wiley in one shot almost like in this game. He, if you fall, he picks you up. If you have beat tokens, essentially. Oh yeah. Yeah. I never, I don't think I ever, you, you, can, you can find him in Slash Man stage by advancing climate change. Yeah. No, I, I, I used him. I mean, I, I got him, but I don't, I don't. What did he do exactly? If you fall in a pity, he comes in and saves you and puts you back on solid ground. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I got him, but I don't ever remember him doing that. Maybe I just wasn't falling in pits after I got him. I probably went back and got him last. I got him last, too. There's yeah. not that many like bottomless pits in Wily's palace, except they're yeah. for like 
I guess the um, there's a lot there's of like the the platforms there where they kind of twist on the because it kind of platforms that go on a track and they like oh, they yeah, twist yeah. if they're on like a certain type of grain. But if you have a super adapter, I use the like super that adapter. Makes, that, yeah, it makes it yeah. little, like so a I lot could, easier. So I could hover whenever the things disappeared. Yeah. yeah. Especially just because, like I said, once you get that um, energy uh, balancer, then that's just like you don't ever have to worry about running out of ammo ever again. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I just it's just me. And then for the like, you have for the boss fights in Wiley, we mentioned base and treble. There's a turtle fight that there's a whole lot to say about the turtle fight. Yeah. And then there's a weird like shogun looking mon like a shogun type or a Japanese type like face mask on this like machine that shoots bombs at you and. You have to like run from it. Like you're autumn, you're always running in this fight. You have to jump and shoot it in the face. Yeah, yeah it's and, not that and you can you can jump on no. the missiles. Yep. Uh, but I would I would say like one out of three times I try to jump on a missile, I just jump straight into the missile and just Me face too. tank it. Yeah, that's, that's probably thing. one of the places where I had to use an energy tank. Actually, I found that boss the easiest because like it has a weakness to like the noise crush, which is shade man's weapon. And yeah. I like about that game is that you can kind of like fire it against the wall and it comes back to you and makes it like a little bit stronger so it does that much more damage. Oh I yeah. That. yeah. Yeah, that makes Turbo Man really easy because like you just basically shoot it at the wall behind you, power it up so when he revs up and jumps over him, when you jump over him, you hit him and it does a lot more damage. Yeah. Oh, again, that useful. again, that's like the benefit of a guide. Like I don't I would never ha- I would have had to just accidentally discover that it does that. Well, it's something that Shade Man does in a fight. Uh, I'm not oh, sure yeah. if it's one of the things that Dr. Wiley or Dr. Light rather says that it can do like you can charge it. I but think it's it kind does. of implied from looking at the fight that you can stack it. Yeah, no, you're right. I think Light says that also. That one thing is, is um, on my emulator, the tab key fast forwards. And anytime someone was talking, I just held down the tab key. And so I missed a lot <laughs> of the dialogue. And I was like, wait, what did you say? <laughs> Damn it. And then but the yeah, last... Uh, the Wily fight before the capsule isn't terrible. I didn't mind that one too much. Or he's in a big machine. That wasn't that bad. Uh, it was, yeah. I mean, he was just, it, he was so predictable in that one that it yeah. was by the time, because at first I was like, I'm not going to use save states on Wily. And so I just like <laughs> save before, I save before his fight. And then I would die on the second fight and then go back and go back. And so I was like, I, I eventually got to where I was running through his first, his first phase without getting hit i was just like like yeah it very much lures you into a false sense of security because you just kind of like in a tank and you just shoot him with a thunderbolt and he drops little versions of himself which you can either shoot or just jump over and then yeah even if you jump over them and lure them back to the right because you kind of when he makes it to the left side he jumps in the air and goes back down to the right if you lure the little tanks over he'll crush them yeah um, and, and, i mean i think he crushes them even if they're not under him yes yeah, so you don't even have to hit the things. He just like will crush his own. He just so there's no point to shooting his little guys. Just jump around them and he'll crush them for you. Yeah, that, that yeah, other he, guy he, told me. It, it really it reminded me again of I was just bring up Dark Souls, but in Dark Souls there's <laughs> bosses with two phases, and you eventually you die on the second phase so much that you eventually get to where the first phase you go through hitless <laughs> because you yeah. because you've seen that first phase so many times. And then of course you have the refights in this game because it's Mega Man. And yeah. They're not, they weren't too bad with the. Yeah, they were fine because you have the weapon. You have all the weapons you need. Yeah, so. and then the we should talk about the final capsule fight, which we've been joking, we've been talking about off and on. But that is, I know I'm going to be reading this shortly in the questions in the common memory. But like, God, this is so fucking hard of a fight. You're talking about the final, 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 the final, boss. final fight, the capsule. And that's so. that's what I find interesting because like like we were talking about like it's the game is fair up to this point, and then suddenly. It just becomes impossible, and well, I it's, know it's, this game was so made in like random. a couple of months, three months. Because I remember them. Yeah, it was like a shockingly little amount of time. So I was like, maybe they didn't have time to balance it properly. But I'm like, the rest of the game feels pretty fine tuned, and then suddenly it's in, it goes from like you know five or six to like fifteen. <laughs> and so for people who haven't played, so you got Wily is in like a little floating capsule, like Bowser at the end of Super Nintendo. Uh, Super Mario World, and he's but he's teleporting around, so you don't know where he's going to appear, and he can appear at basically three different levels, and the first two levels you can hit him with your regular weapons, but the third level, the only way to hit him is to aim the freeze cracker at him, which is you know 
how it, or it you can launch the springs if you have a fully charged if you shot. have a fully charged shot right but every and time the he aiming is really precise too very precise and every time <laughs> he appears he fires three balls of energy that four. zigs or four and they're they'll be yellow red and blue red sets you on fire and makes you sit there and tick down damage nearly a fourth of your life bar and you take the second hit and then, yeah, the electric he will, balls. he'll fire an electric blast at the floor. And so you get hit by the fire, you land on the floor, and have to sit there and get hit by the, the ball also. And you'll lose about a third of your life if that hits you. And then or, the freeze is the same the thing. One, you get the frozen, does the same thing. and you get hit by the electric. But now, right. and then or the, the yellow le- one is just a regular hit. Yeah, I That's jump the, into that. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> the only, the, you have two choices. You can either be so good that you avoid all four of those energy balls as they zigzag in a very hard to predict pattern, or you jump into the yellow one. But the thing is he could fire three reds and a blue or two reds, a blue and a yellow. And you don't know which direction they're going to go. And I tested it. I flash saved right as he was about to fire it's and random. then would load and it would be different every time. So it's completely random, which order the balls are going to come out in uh, which direction they're going to go in which combination of colors they are. And so it really comes down to you're either insanely good at this or lucky or, or super lucky. I watched you're, someone. Yeah. I now I watched a video of someone beat Wiley without getting hit. Damn. And he talked about it and he said, I basically, I've just spent dozens of hours on this fight and gotten to where I can predict it. But he said, but that's, it's really that or luck because it's, it's so random. And that's, I also noticed like with speed runners, <laughs> They jump first to bait it, and then they slide to get away from where they were, and that sent right because it goes towards where you first and were. That, and and that was what again. this guy did. That was what this guy did, and he suggested he said jump to bait it, then slide. And I tried that, and I could I could do that maybe one out of six or seven. It's times. still hard, so yeah. So I yeah. but yeah. So what I did was I just would jump into the yellow attack, then avoid the electric, right. and jumping to the yellow, I only lose about a fifth of my life bar. So I can do that five times before I die. And I only have to hit him 15 times to kill him. So I just need three energy tanks and I have to not mess up. So like, <laughs> I think it, it could have done this like one or two ways to make it easier. Like one, they could have let you bank more energy because essentially you can carry four E tanks, four W tanks, which fill up your weapon energy and one mega tank, which fills up everything. Right. So essentially when it comes to filling up your power, you have five tries so they can either give you the ability to stack like nine energy tanks, like in Mega Man three through six, right? Or they make the spring do a lot of damage because it doesn't even do that much damage to the point where I thought that I was like, there has to be a better weapon. Because yeah, spring in, does two, ice does one. In Mega Man nine, yeah. When you beat Mega Man nine. You when you fight Doctor Wily, or you're talking to Doctor Wily, and he said, "This is all the times you failed." And the Mega Man sprite, it will show you the weakness. And in Meg- the Mega Man 7 one is the Wild Quell. I'm like, oh, so that is the weapon. Mega Man 9 is telling me this. <laughs> That's uh, weird. Uh, is to use the what? Use the Wild Quell because the Mega Man oh, right, right. Because he's yes. pink and green. So I was like, okay, right. so this is the weapon you have to use. Yeah. And, and, and to be fair, you could just beat him with the, with the Buster because your Buster will still damage him, right? It just does one damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but like, I mean, so that's that. That I think he has thirty health. So I think it's just then you'd have to hit him thirty times, and then he has to be <laughs> within Buster reach, right? Which because he he could just there could be an instance where he only appears at the top of the screen. Yeah, which yeah. that can happen also. Like the he can not come down to your level. Right. Exactly. And I I also I used like two or three Wily tanks too because I kept running out of energy for my Wild Coil and my um, Freeze Cracker because I would miss so much with both. That's why I had save states. I didn't miss. <laughs> well, I, I so my my kind of role on games like this is I will use save states, but I don't like to save scum inside the fight. So I'll save like right before a fight. Yeah. And so that yeah. was my thing is I save before Wily Phase One. And so every time I died, I'd have to go back and beat him through phase one and then phase two again. Yeah, and it was took me over an hour. It took me like over an hour to do it that way. But I did do it. Whereas Joe, with the, how, uh, Darkwing Duck, I had to <laughs> save scum <laughs> like crazy. Joe, how was your experience with this final fight? Yeah, I didn't beat it. <laughs> okay. 
I and no I, one blames you. Yeah, no I gave it, you. No, that's fair. I gave it my my hardest uh my hardest go, and I was doing the same thing. Y'all had I didn't th- I didn't. What's, there's a couple things like I didn't know. Like one thing I've noticed using the the wild coil is you have to be really careful because you would have to start off i would start off on the regular buster mode and then hold down the power up button and then shift over to wild coil so i wouldn't waste a shot trying to charge it up okay. yeah and then uh what was the other thing i didn't even know i didn't even think about using the because i'll even said in the chat too you can aim up with the the freezer cracker so i was like oh i didn't even think about using that whenever he's up in the air and that fire attack is just complete bullshit like i don't even yeah. know who yeah. th- like it, I I would imagine even back then because they do a lot more now. That might be what it is too. They beta uh, beta test a lot of these games and like she like let, let non employees play it to try to like see what works and what doesn't. They do a lot more now to make sure games aren't too fucking hard. Like this is one of those things where it shows like no, you would have imagined like that fire attack. Like everyone would have complained about it and they would have like turned yeah. it a lot down. Yeah. Well, I think it's just for games of that era because they were just played by people who were playing them so much that they the just games. like they didn't have any type of perspective. Well, like, and you also play so many Super Nintendo games. Like I remember speaking to someone who like worked on Maximum Carnage, and it's just like, yeah, we it was hard because we were the only ones who were playing it, and we were like working on it, so we didn't see the problem. But when everyone else got it, they were like, oh no, this is very problematic. Yeah, it's 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 also though it's the final boss. Like as a kid, I just assumed, oh well, you don't beat video games usually, right? Like <laughs> I I've had so many. I mean, I played a lot of games as a kid, and I didn't beat almost any game as a kid. Uh, I beat like uh, Super Mario World. I mean, I started playing. You know, I mean, video. I started playing video games with like Pitfall on the Atari, but Super Mario World was probably the first game I ever beat. Because like I would I would play I would play Mega Man three forever and never get past the first stage of Wily's Castle. Same thing with Mega Man five. I you know never could like figure my way through Labyrinth seven and um, Legend of Zelda as a kid, and that was my favorite. Still is one of my favorite video games ever. I've beaten it many times since then. But as a kid, I just was like, well, no, I'm not going to beat it. Obviously, and that's so what's I was really that. frustrating about this is that for the most part, the final Wily bosses. Even Mega Man 1, if you can get there, they're reasonable. Like even like Mega Man 5, you just turn on beat and he just hits him. Like you don't even have to do anything. And like Mega Man 4, you kind of just like have the barrel shot over your head and just make him run into it. And like Mega Man 3, if you have the top spin, you can beat the boss in like one or two hits. Oh man, yeah. Yeah. And this is like the best weapon is a crapshoot at best if you're actually like i turned this on yesterday and i actually did it and i was shocked that i did it yeah it is it is very hard it, but i was saying like Mega Man 2 how on earth did anyone ever beat the yellow double without cheating i did <laughs> that was Mega Man 1 because i played it on i played Mega. i rented Mega Man 1 but i couldn't i remember we beat the the six robot masters once and we got to Wiley one, and then my nan came in and hit the plug on our Nintendo, and it oh, reset no. the game. And oh, Mega Man no. one doesn't have passwords, so we're like, "All right, we're bringing this back to the gas station." Um, so I never oh. finished it until Nesticle started to be a thing around 1998, 99, and emulation. So yeah, I that just was when I started beating games. the pattern on my Gravis PC and gamepad. <laughs> No, I was going to say, that is when I got to college and emulation kind of became big. That was when I started beating games. But up until then, yeah, as a kid, it was just like, I assumed you're not going to beat, you're not going to beat games. No, you know, that's like, like, I did. Cr- I beat, like, except for RPGs. Like, yeah, that's what played. I mostly played as a kid. You know, I didn't play anything else but RPGs. You know, RPGs are made to be beaten, though I you know, never beat Mystic Quest either. Well, I can change that if you like later this year. No, <laughs> Mystic Quest was the game that turned me off from RPGs because yeah. I, I had never experienced them. And I was at a friend's house and I was watching because I was used to action games and Zelda and Mega Man. So I saw two people on either side of a screen and then one went over and hit the sword and it said miss. And I was like, this game is dumb. You clearly <laughs> hit him with your sword. <laughs> so because of that, I never played an RPG again until Mario RPG and that's, that's because it was a Mario game. That's awesome. That's hilarious. 
Mystic Quest is a good game. I'll die on that hill too. I mean, it's it's a fine game. It was basically Square was like, well, these Americans, American, are Americans are too stupid for Final Fantasy V, so we'll make an easy Final Fantasy game for just for Americans. And then it came out way later in in Japan, similar to well, anyway. But yeah, <laughs> it's 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 fine. It's just like a heavily neutered. You know, it's more of a. It really is more like a Dragon Quest than a Final Fantasy, also, like yeah. an early Dragon Quest. Oh, and we should we should talk about the ending of this oh, game. Oh, I really want to get into the ending <laughs> because this is Ooh, also yeah. funny. Because this is the the there's a little bit of dialogue right before the ending where Mega Man is going to kill Wily once and for all. Yes, and then Which Wily is, is says in the English version specifically. Oh, okay, and then he said Wily says, "Well." You're a, you, you're a robot. You can't harm, you know, your creator. And he's like, I'm more than a robot. And he's ready to kill him. Like, he's just going to like, we're done. Like, this is the end of the Mega Man series. We're finally. And then Bass and Trouble show up and rescue him. Or Bass shows up and saves them for some reason. Yeah. So in the Japanese version, he it, it's it, I'm reading about the differences. And they say that it doesn't imply that he's going to kill Wiley. I was going to okay. ask if anyone looked that up because I was like, I feel that's a localization thing where yeah. someone was just like, <laughs> this, always this was complaining high... about how Batman always lets the Joker go and if he killed him, then he wouldn't keep breaking out. So he's just like, you know what? I'm just going to end it. And then I wonder if it was also like, because something about Mega Man what was interesting about this is that I like Mega Man 6 ends with like you bring Wiley to jail and there's like a kind of like a freeze frame of a newspaper being like, this is it, Dr. Wily's done. And then Mega Man X came out. So you kind of, you never expected to see like five more Mega Man games come out after this. Like you expect it to be like X and then Legends and then the next thing and then the next thing. So like the localization is almost like, yeah, it's one uber violent because dr wiley's like oh i'm sorry i'll never do it again like you know there's bad people on both sides and then <laughs> Mega Man's like no you're just gonna break out i'm just gonna kill you and then he's like you can't and then he says like i'm more than a robot and i wonder if that was like kind of a soft lead into like Mega Man x where robots are essentially like humans and killers they fully, they fully replace humans too i think mm-hmm. yeah yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm reading about the differences, and it's the, the wiki is not written very well, so it's kind of hard to tell. But I think they, they basically, it's just, he doesn't, Mega Man doesn't say anything in the Japanese version. He doesn't say that I'm more than a robot line. And then he just, like, turns off his blaster and walks away. So oh, okay. But I, I think, Maybe. I don't know, I haven't played it, so I'm just going. Yeah, I like that he almost sense. kills him, though. Walks away from the explosion like a cool guy. Yeah. I do. I really like the like the 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 ending. Uh, the it's it's using the mode seven, you know, like parallax scrolling thing. Yeah, where he's like walking in front of the different vistas and stuff. I thought that was really cool uh, during the credits. It is a cool I, moment, though. I thought I thought it looked good. I was so, reading that they did um, anniversary collection on PS2. They couldn't emulate mode seven very well, and so they just cut that. They just cut oh. the. Uh, the, the credits see that's yeah. I, I i think that was the first time i ever finished Mega Man 7 and i don't own i had that game i don't own it anymore because i was like well i have the carts in the legacy collection so i got rid of it and now i've always been curious to rebuy it because i wanted the arcade games but now they're coming out in arcade stadium so now that is kind of yeah. died down and i know I kind of wanted the Xbox version because I know the PS2 version has an episode of the Mega Man cartoon Mm -hmm. and the GameCube version has like a mini documentary. Oh, Um, that's cool. But but they also flip the controls in the GameCube version. So B is jump and A is shoot. So it's it's disgusting. Yeah, that would be that would not be good. (laughs) And the Xbox version has everything, but you have to play it on an Xbox original controller, which is not ideal. (laughs) No, the D pad on the Xbox original controller was not good. Yeah, no, but neither was the GameCube one. So, (laughs) yeah, Yeah, I I used to to say. Oh, go ahead. Any any Uh, last thing you want to say before we go into questions, comments, or memories? Yes, that's all. I was had the uh, speed run in the on the on my left on my other screen. And kind of offhandedly looking at it while we're talking, apparently you can beat the first phase of Wily with like one hit. How? <laughs> you use the fire roll and just run up to him, apparently. 
I am definitely playing this game after this show is done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious about that. I mean, it might it might be some kind of glitch or something because he like from what I saw in like the corner of my eyes, I was like, that's weird. And I rewound it a little bit. Is he has like rush do like a rush search, and then whenever Wiley comes down, he just runs up to him and does it, and it just kills him in one hit on the first face. Yeah, I can see why that would work. I can see why that would work because it would just like uh, basically be like freezing everybody on screen while the cutscene of the rush search plays out. Well, no, Rush is gone by the time Wiley uh, falls in. So yeah, uh, I have I no I idea. Know. Yeah, I don't know then. I mean, it sounds like probably something similar to what we were talking about with the yellow devil bug in Mega Man 2. Please send Link to chat. I want to see this. <laughs> yeah. I have some homework to do after. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go on to questions, comments, or memories. I did get a few, actually, because people actually have played this game. Well, like the last couple games I've covered on the show lately. <laughs> and no one's commented much about from the official Laser Time community. From Chad Hembrock, a few years ago, I owned every physical Mega Man game and played through them in order until I got to seven and stopped. I had eight as a kid, but never really got into it. I love nine and ten going back to the eight bit style of Mega Man X perfection. Uh, from Jack Dogerty, great looking game, but kind of mediocre to play. Not a bad game, but not awesome either. Pales in comparison to Mega Man X. I agree with that by a lot. <laughs> from Kevin Stone, I owned the cartridge and did not like this game as a kid. From Stephanie McKeon, I liked it, but not as much as the original NES game. Part 8, I thought, improved a bit on everything 7 tried to do. Oh, here's one we'll all agree with, from Bobby Midkiff, or Bobby Midkiff. I really enjoyed my time with 7. Definitely still the hardest Wily final fight to me, in my opinion. I think it's just the hardest Wily fight in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And from Super Nintendo Supergroup, uh, from Maru Kuru, last Wily is the hardest boss I ever beat. Yeah. <laughs> from Miguel Mick. The soundtrack of this is one of the best. From Chris Foster, for me, it was the hardest of all the Mega Man games. I really loved this version. It was great playing the Blue Bomber with the SNES graphics. I still love playing this game. The boss fight against Base and Treble is still one of my favorite Mega Man battles. Okay, that was a really cool fight. And that's something that earlier. I, and I, I wanted to... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I don't think that's something we really touched on. That's something I do like about this game is that like it was it was kind of tough going back from this to from Mega Man 7 or Mega Man X, rather. But it is cool to see like all of the 8-bit just like stage enemies just like nicer. Like that was something yes. that I was like. And the music is also really great. Like I like the music was so good. That was what I was Cloud I Man Stage is like one of my favorites. I played Cloud Man Stage first. And when I first loaded up, I was like, oh, man, this is like I think this is one of the best Mega Man tracks I've ever heard. I love this. It, it kind of it, it was like the Cloud Man Stage in particular. I really liked a lot that sound that that uh, song. Right, and from Daniel Andre, one of my favorites. The Super Adapter was cool, and visuals are really good in this game. Music is quality, too. Challenging, but beatable. How I like a game. <laughs> and from Onyx Ruse, what was the difference between Mega Man X again? It's better. <laughs> and you play a different <laughs> Mega Man, essentially. And you fight <laughs> animal robots, you jump on walls, you get upgrades in the game. There's there's a you, Yeah, you basically like build like a suit. I mean, I... I yeah. Yeah, like you talk about like the rush adapter suit is like you're like in a Gundam, but that's like basically what you do through the normal course of the game in Mega Man X is you like yeah. build out like a Gundam suit almost. I, I, I love Mega, <laughs> Mega Man X is one of my favorite cool. games ever. So Thanks. it's definitely, definitely my favorite Mega Man game. And last one I'm going to read from this group from Adam Jacob. How long was it before you need to press select on the main screen to access the shop? I made it so widely. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have. I would not have even known there was a shop if it hadn't been for the walkthrough. So. Actually, it was his comment that brought up because I because I posted these before and I'm like, oh, yeah. And that's what made me realize about the shop, too, at one point. So thank you, sir. I'm sure it tells you, but I must have missed it. I just I only knew because I looked up a walkthrough and it said, go to the shop. It's like, go to the shop. There's a <laughs> shop in this game. <laughs> and it does not tell you. <laughs> and from the last group I'm going to read from Mega Man fans. See here, first one from Steven Broadhurst. Yeah, it's a rough fight. I usually need all the E tanks to get through it. Talking about the Wily fight. If you die once, that's it. Good luck with them. Kind of wish the rush armor was good against them as a boss weakness, as an incentive to seek it out. Maybe as the hidden items and ways that you get them is one of the more novel, interesting parts of his entry to the classic series. From Daryl Hunter, I like how the weapons can change the environment to reveal secret areas. I wish other games in the series did this more often. X X does though. Like I mean, you beat bosses, reveal stuff too. Mm -hmm. And from okay. From Luke Joshua, this is my favorite Mega Man classic game. There are lots of Easter eggs and secrets. 
And from Brian Sellers, I love Seven, but the difficulty and balance is wild. The robot masters are hilariously easy once you know the order, thanks to the way their weaknesses reset their attack patterns and animations. But yeah, Wily Capsule is rough no matter what. Yeah. And let's see here. Okay, from Javier Pacello. My brother got all of our SNES games stolen, and this was the only one that remained. So I played it constantly and mastered every bit of it. I managed to do a no-hit, no-special-weapons run. For Wily, I had to use the Proto Shield, though, as it can block the yellow bullet. That I did not know. But that's a bullet you don't want to block. <laughs> well, I mean, if you, I mean, if you were, if you were that one to block in the end because you dodged the rest, it wouldn't be that bad. I guess. Yeah, yeah. If you could dodge the rest, I mean, <laughs> the only reason you tank the yellow one is because you can't dodge them, and if you get hit by one, you don't get hit by the others. So. Yeah, that's why I took the yellow one too. Yeah. Imagine having like all your games stolen, and like they end up leaving you like a shitty fucking game. <laughs> Man, <laughs> like all I'm gonna play is this for the rest of my life. They don't from, make Super Nintendo any games anymore. <laughs> from Cloud, Cloud Men DevOps. I never finish it because of Wiley. One day I'll try again. There's going to be a lot of people's experience. From Danny yeah. Bosnup. up. Wiley is fucking hard, but I saw someone use his th- the Thundercloud to skip the four balls of hell. You, knew, you need to do a lot of pause slash change, but it's more easy than fight him normally and I'm to get hit by the Thunder ones. And aim to get hit by the Thunder ones. Hmm. If you could, I might have to look this up now. That makes me curious. And last comment I'm going to read from Steve Steve Gowler, hardest Wiley in the series. I 100% agree. So far, what I've played. Yeah. I mean, from what I've played, yeah. All right, and that brings us to Shelf Stacker Box. And, Carrie, what about you? I'd say Stack. It's a good game. It deserves to be played once. I don't see myself going back and replaying it anytime soon, but definitely not throwing it in the box forever. Okay. And what about you, Joe? I'll go ahead and put this on the stack. It, it's it's one of those weird things like we're talking about it more and more and I wouldn't mind going back to it here maybe in a week or so but it's not it's not shelf worthy and uh, I don't think it goes it go in the box either. Okay, I'm I'm I'll go next. I'm gonna put this in the stack also. I I had fun with it but I don't really have much of a, a joy to go back to it. But it wasn't it was a good game. It wasn't it's just gets really hard in that final fight. But the rest of the game is pretty. I liked it so it's gonna go in the stack. Oh, what about you, Blair? Uh, I would also say stack. It's a weird thing because I bought this game multiple times and i will go on like i'll die on the hill that i like Mega Man x like the super nintendo games better than a lot of Mega Man games but i think overall like Mega Man 1 through 11 some are better and worse than others but Mega Man x like there are some legit bad games in that series okay. and this is like a good game up until that fight and that kind of like is the reason why i put it in the stack is because like i will randomly turn on Mega Man 1 through 6 and 8 kind of 9 and 10 a little but uh, this one I just like I think about playing it because I think of all the good parts and then I think about the end and then I'm just soured and I don't want to play it so I'll turn <laughs> on every now and then so even though I have it on multiple shelves I'll I'll put it in the stack <laughs> okay hey that's not what I I didn't know what to expect when I came in this episode so <laughs> <works> for me <laughs> All right, and I should mention what we're talking about next week. Next week, we are going to be talking about Arkham Knight for hours, I'm sure. So that's what you get to stay tuned for next week. That game, I, I, I know I talked a lot of shit about Arkham Knight on this show beforehand. Let's just say my opinion is not the same. <laughs> when I, yeah, I no, replayed it. That, that is a game where when it first came out, it was so broken that Steam had to like, I think that's what got Steam to start their return policy. Yeah, but they fixed it. They <laughs> it fixed was it. Cyberpunk really? before Cyberpunk. Yeah, it's one of those games like Cyberpunk or um, well, less so Cyberpunk, but or like a No Man's Sky, where like when it came out, it was extremely disappointing, and then they spent a lot of time fixing it, and now it's actually worth playing. It just wasn't that it's disappointing; is that it didn't work. Well, yeah, it just <laughs> straight didn't work. So yeah, it's more like Cyberpunk in that sense. Yeah. I don't know. I played Cyberpunk on Stadia, so on Stadia, Cyberpunk played like a freaking dream. So. I had no problem, but other than it still had bugs. <laughs> it's still buggy as shit, but it worked. <laughs> and Carrie, where can people find you at? Hey, yeah, so I'm on Twitch, Carusetta, K-E-R-O-O-S-E-T-A. I play uh, video games, mostly Dark Souls games, and I also modify and repair video game consoles on there and occasionally just uh, point the camera at my 3D printer. So <laughs> check me out, <laughs> check me out there. Like and same, same name on all the various social medias as well. Okay. And Blair, where can people find you at? You can find me on Twitter at Blarcade. Uh, you can also read my work at comicbookvideogames.com. 
if you're looking for the one person on the internet who's going to post a, a review of a league, the DC League of Superhero Pets on Xbox One next week, it will be me. <laughs> there we go. All right. If you enjoyed this episode, we have over 350 other episodes for you. There's a lot. Uh, we also have done a bunch of Mega Man over the past three years of the show. So let me read those to you. We did Mega Man 6 Mini 17, Mega Man X4, Episode 166, Mega Man Legends 2, 162, Mega Man X3, 136, Mega Man 5, Mini 12, Mega Man 4, Mini 11, Mega Man Legends, Episode 117, Mega Man X2, Episode 99, Mega Man Let the Games Begin, Comic 18, Mega Man X, Episode 85, Mega Man 1 and 2, Episode 25. That's all Mega Man you can listen to. I am missing any... I feel like I'm no, I I didn't know I missed Mega Man three for some reason. I must have put a hyphen in that one. I didn't fix it yet. And that is because at first I didn't know how I was going to type up Mega Man. Yeah, Mega Man Mini. Oh, wait, there's more Mega Man. M- Mega Man Mini or Mega Man three Mini 10 Mega Man powered up Mini six. So there's a lot of Mega Man. Go check all that out. And I want to give a shout out to my awesome intro and outro courtesy of Helena at Hell Has Free. You can follow her on TikTok. Also want to give a shout out to my buddy Bill Tucker, who did the MCU movies with me. They're at his own podcast, The Gamer Looks at 40, which we referenced earlier. He does interviews with people about how video games have affected their life and kind of goes through different series and very in-depth show. Very good. Go check it out. And if you would want to help out the show, we do have a Patreon. You can go vote in our Patreon for as little as a dollar every month. We have different polls. You get to affect how the show, what comes on the show sometimes. Right now, you can vote for Shazam, Blade Trinity, Aquaman, or Shazam. Right now, Blade Trinity is winning. So you can go help out. We can help make that happen for a little dollar, and you make me happy. So, <laughs> And <laughs> last thing to say, oh, and please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and on YouTube. You can find us on YouTube, audio only. And I think that's everything I need to say. So we will see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. That's more like it. Yeah. <laughs>